didn't a midshipman named Roger Starback once pull it off? And isn't there more to life than just taking the money to run and jump ship? It was tough. That's what you dream about when you're a little kid. You, you always want to make that kind of money. When I came to the neighborhood, I was hoping to be successful. My goal is still to be successful. Uh, I think just a few different opportunities have opened for me and, and a few different paths to success. Okay, Bill, you know, Duke's been rather tight so far in this tournament, don't well, you think? I think they have. I think uh, they're number one, everybody expects them. But Tommy Emmaker and Johnny Dawkins have to shoot well and get some easy points to get Navy out of that zone, or they're going to have a tough night. All right, everyone expects them to go to the Final Four. They'll have to get by Navy today. We'll come back and take a look at Jim Balvano in just a moment. But in our second game today, we'll see top-seeded Kansas challenged by North Carolina State. And as Bill Raftery tells us, Wolfpack coach Jim Balvano starred in a storybook finish of his own just three years ago. There's never a doubt in my mind what I wanted to do. I remember being in the third grade in the Sister Mary Helen's class in St. Leo's when they, they ask you the right, uh, you know, what do you want to be? And everybody wants to be at that age a priest, usually in Catholic school, you know, or you want to be a fireman, a policeman, and I said basketball coach. What? Jim Valvano followed his father's vocation, and three years ago, his mission took him to the top of the basketball world, but times change. I can honestly say that I can't capture that same emotion, that same feeling. Like right now, I'm very happy, I'm very pleased, I'm proud of my ball club, but I don't, I don't have that same, uh, uh, that same feeling of that Sunday game is going to be my life. But basketball is Chris Washburn's life. The sophomore forward was recruited by Valvano despite low college board scores. And last year, Washburn was arrested for theft. Right but the coach right stood by him. Uh, the, the Chris Washburns, uh, you know, of the world deserve the opportunity also to, uh, uh, to get an education. And Valvano has become something of an educator himself, both off the court and on it. He lets you know what's going on in, in every situation before you even play the game. So you know when you get into the game, you're not shocked or surprised at, about anything. So that's that's why he's a great tournament coach. It takes him a long time to wind down, and he doesn't sleep for a long time after the game. But um, eventually, he'll be up for so many hours that your body just tells you that finally you need to go to sleep. But um, he's very intense person, mostly all the time. His family, though, helps him to unwind. Italian kid, gotta have a little piece of peace. Oh, she has a glass of wine too with it. That's the that's the difference. He loves kids, all his kids. Loves watching them expand their horizons. Everything is a first-time experience. From the first time we went on a road trip, we landed in Chicago. And uh, my kids, my young kids, my freshmen, this is a true story, they didn't even know we fed them. They, they were heading off to McDonald's to get something to eat, you know, but they didn't know. No, no, we feed you. We bring you here and we feed you. Yes, everything really is a first-time experience. And maybe some moments were meant to remain just that way. If we hadn't been there in 83, last year and this year, oh, I'd have Ajuda. You all know what that means out there. That's what I'd have. And right now, I'm okay. <laughs> At Rutgers, he was the second fiddle to Bobby Lloyd. But in the ACC, he may be the answer to Dale Brown. <laughs> okay. You told me before that game might be uh, coming down to the final buzzer. Speaking of which, we're going to take a look at some of the best of buzzer beater finishes so far in this tournament when we continue. Well, the last two weeks, Bill Raftery, there have been 58 games played in this tournament. Which one had the best finish in your mind? Well, for me, the win of Navy over Cleveland State, the inbounds pass, and David Robinson knocking it down. All right. Now, of course, we've had a lot of good finishes this year, and that's... That's really just part of the tradition of this tournament. It's down to seven seconds. You can see the time. Wittenberg, oh, it's a long way. They won it. Hunter is going to run it now. Where's Douglas? Seconds, they've got the ball half court. Bill oh. gets a shot. It's a good one. What a shot. Eight seconds left. Bust for Robinson in the middle of the floor. Right there he is. Oh. Going for the game winner. I'd get John Williams the ball somehow. Red is going to take the shot. Oh, One second. One second. And the game has gone out. Oh, he's got it. Wilson.
Coming up next, Navy versus Duke for a ticket to Texas. Robinson is a junior at the U.S. Naval Academy. When he steps on the basketball floor, he can dominate a game. The nation's leading rebounder and shot blocker has led Navy to its finest season. Among their victims in tournament play was Syracuse. The Middies ended their season in the Carrier Dome. Next, it was Cleveland State, who coach Kevin Mackey prayed could continue its Cinderella season. However, in the East Regional Semifinals, Robinson scored the winning basket with five seconds remaining to eliminate Cleveland State and advance to the Regional Final. Even though Navy must now face the number one team of the nation, the Middies are confident. Like many other teams that started this tourney, Navy knew that their road to the Final Four might have to go through Duke. Duke, the team to beat, the number one seed in the East, and the number one ranked team in the nation. This talent-laden team is led by the backcourt tandem, playmaker Tommy Amaker, and All-America Johnny Dawkins. After cruising by DePaul Friday night, the Blue Devils are poised for their first trip back to the Final Four since 1978. They must sink the Navy for the right to cut down the nets and head to Dallas. It's Navy versus Duke. Shipment of Navy against the number one seed in all this tournament, the Blue Devils of Duke. Hi everybody, I'm Gary Bender. What a glorious season for Navy. They are 30 and 4. They've won 16 straight games. They're a step away from their first Final Four ever. While theirs has been glorious, Duke has had a spectacular year. They are 35 and 2. They have the longest winning streak of the nation at 19. They've been at the Final Four four times. They'd like to go there for the fifth time, the first time since 1978. And Doug Collins, I thought Paul Evans and Navy said it so well. He says we're simply playing the best team in the country. Gary, I think the biggest key today for Navy is they must get off to a good start. They're going to be facing the toughest man-to-man -to -man pressure they've faced all season long. Doug Wojcik is going to have to bring the ball up against the pressure, get them into their half-court offense. We always hear about doing it the Navy way. Well, the Navy way this year is the Mr. Robinson way. Duke coach Mike Krzyzewski said yesterday the key is not to try to key on David Robinson. They want to play their regular defense. They want to stop Vernon Butler and Kyler Whitaker, force these other players to do something they're not used to doing. Two teams one hurdle, one step away from the final four in Dallas. We'll be back to set the starting lineups in just a moment. Between these two clubs since 1983, the midshipmen of Navy defeating Tulsa, Syracuse, and Cleveland State to arrive at this championship game. Duke, on the other hand, had a scare against Mississippi Valley State. Very impressive against Old Dominion and dispatched to Paul on Friday night. And now for the introduction of our starting lineups, the public address announcer, Dom Alagia. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Brendan Byrne Arena for this afternoon's Eastern Regional final game between the Navy Midshipmen and the Blue Devils from Duke. Now let's meet the starting lineups. For Navy, at forward, a 6'6 junior from Floyd Knobs, Indiana, number 40, Carl Lieber. For Duke, at forward, a 6'5 senior from Drury, North Carolina, number 12, David Henderson. For Navy, at forward, a 6'7 senior from Beltsville, Maryland, number 51, Vernon Butler. For Duke, at forward, a 6'8 senior from Scottsdale, Arizona, number 32, Mark Allery. For Navy, at center, a 6'11 junior from Woodbridge, Virginia, number 50, David Robinson. For Duke, at center, a 6'8 senior from Rolling Hills, California, number 21, Jay Billis. Navy at guard, a 6'6 senior from Lebanon, Oregon, number five, Kyler Whitaker. For Duke, at guard, a six foot junior from Falls Church, Virginia, number four, Tommy Amaker. For Navy, 
Navy. At guard, a 6'1 junior from Wheeling, West Virginia, number 10, Doug Wojcik. At guard, a 6'2 senior from Washington, D.C., number 24, Johnny Dawkins. And introducing the head coaches for Navy in his sixth season, Paul Evans. And for Duke in his sixth season, Mike Krzyzewski. And so the road to Dallas, one hurl away for one of these ball clubs to join two teams already earned that right yesterday. Back to the tip in a moment. This week is first for Navy. Well, I, Gary, I think they must get off to a good start. They must keep Duke on the perimeter against their 2-3 zone. They must limit turnovers. Normally those turnovers against Duke end up in fast breaks. They must be able to pound the ball inside, get to the free throw line. All right, on the other hand, what are the keys for Duke? They've got to shut down Butler and Whitaker. They've got to get to the offensive boards. That was a key against DePaul. Pressure, force turnovers, and penetrate the gaps in the zone. And so we're ready to go in this East Regional Championship. The right to join LSU and Louisville has already made it. Of course, a game later today between Kansas and North Carolina State. Robinson against Phyllis, and Vernon Butler will track it down for the midshipman. Ojik is going to have to handle the pressure. He's going to be able to put the ball on the floor. That is a big question and not have it taken away. Vernon Butler will be very important right here in the high-low set. He'll be a passer looking to get it inside. He threw that one away, intended on the baseline for Liebert. Paul Evans not happy with that start. Duke will be in their familiar man-to-man -man zone defense. On the other hand, Navy will be into a 2-3 zone. Vernon Butler in the middle, look at Allery trying to get the ball inside, attacking the basket. Henderson, this is the guy that Coach Krzyzewski has, says has not really had a typical game in the NCAA. He's looking for him to explode. That's not the way he wanted to start. Robinson brings it down. Well, on the first possession, Navy did exactly what they wanted to do. It was all perimeter passing from Duke, a shot, and no offensive rebound. Here is Robinson. Mr. Robinson has the midshipman on the scoreboard. Everybody's calling him Mr. He's earned the respect. Deal attempt by Wojcik. Henderson into Allery, stripped. And Wojcik saved it in, and then it's regained by Allery, and we're going to have a foul. Foul will go on Navy. Navy did a nice job there, forcing a loose ball. Carl Liebert looked like he was running away from the ball that time, Gary. He's got to go back and get the ball before he worries about trying to get into a fast break situation. But good interior defense there. Nice hands by Vernon Butler to knock that ball loose. Liebert committing the foul. Hamburger, beautiful pass, but it's intercepted. Phyllis couldn't hang on. Liebert reached in and came up with it. They had the right idea. They want to penetrate. Get into the gaps against that zone. They really look for this high-low situation. Get it for the outside jumper. Duke has to make him put the ball on the floor, Gary. He's an excellent standing still shooter. Well, was it? Krzyzewski said we can't let it get his feet set. And there is Amaker missing, but Henderson on the follow. And it's even a two. David Henderson has... Drew, this year, played his best games in the big games, and obviously, this is a big game. Whittaker had 23 points in that win against Cleveland State to go with 10 assists, and they don't want him starting off with a hot hand he had the other night, and that one is thrown away. Whitaker says Dawkins touched it, but the officials do not agree. Three turnovers now against Navy. Here's what Duke did so well the other night against DePaul. The outside jumper didn't go, but there's David Henderson on the offensive board. And, Gary, that's one of the keys we mentioned. Navy just cannot give up second shots to this Duke Blue Devil squad. It's tied to two. Henderson will kick it off to the All-America Dawkins. Rebound. Phyllis tips it off to Henderson. And Henderson gets a roll. Henderson, a second team, all ACC pick. He's had some brilliant performances. I'm sure this is the day that Mike Krzyzewski would love to see David Henderson break loose in the tournament. And it goes to Robinson, and Henderson commits the foul. That will be the first on Duke. Duke plays a team concept on defense. You see Billis behind 
David Robinson right now. When he catches the ball, look how they dive in on the post. They're going to collapse and try to force him to kick that ball out. David Robinson cannot put the ball on the floor. That's where turnovers will be created. They want to tire Robinson also. They feel he cannot play a full 40 minutes. He has to coast it over, but right now he's not coasting. That same inline out of bounds play is the one that beat Cleveland State the night. The last five seconds, they float him to the middle of the floor, lob to him. He goes up and just knocks the jumper in. Doug, you know what's coming, but you can't stop it. Well, he's just so big. There's another foul on Liebert as he pushes on Phyllis on the baseline. That will be the second on Carl Liebert, the junior out of Floyd's Knobs, Indiana. He grew up, he used to go in his backyard and pretend he was playing the Louisville, Indiana game. Shooting baskets, playing for one side and the other, growing up in the southernmost part of Indiana. I'm sure being from Indiana, Indiana always won his imaginary ball games. His dad, on the other hand, played at Louisville with Wes Unsell, so maybe that was up for contention. <laughs> 17 minutes to go in the first half, four apiece. There is Robinson going to the steal. Dawkins, rebound David Robinson. Duke is an excellent shooting team, but here in the early going, not hitting the shots that characteristically would go for him. They're two of six. Bojic doing a nice job now handling the pressure. He is not forced to turn over yet. There's Robinson, that's gonna be a charge. Amaker drawing the charge. And that is going to be a bone of contention throughout this day. If they're going to call this foul, Robinson could be in trouble. Amaker, it looks like he flopped a little bit there to me. It was a little bit of a light contact, but if they're going to force that kind of foul today on David Robinson, he's going to get three quick ones because Duke does a nice job in their help defense coming over, sliding in, and trying to take that charge. Now Robinson wonders if it'll be consistently called. That's the thing you wonder about is Robinson picks up the first. Joe Forte, Dick Paparo, and Tom Finker are officials at Henderson. Has really started Duke off well. He has all six of the Blue Devils' points. David Robinson is fouled out of only three games, but he's been in foul difficulty a lot of this tournament. You know, if you're Paul Evans, or you want David Robinson picking up his fouls on the defensive end of the floor, not on the offensive end of the floor. He wants to get him going after the shot. There's Whitaker, and he's not off to the start he was against Cleveland State. It will be off of Duke. I'm sorry, off of Navy. Duke will have the ball. Amaker will inbound. There is Mike Krzyzewski, the UPI National Coach of the Year, the Coach of the Year of the ACC. I'm sure this sort of feels like Mike Krzyzewski's going back in time. He was a successful Army player and the Army coach, and here he is facing Navy again, trying to get to the final four. Shot by Allery from outside. Lieber tries to tip it. Dawkins comes up with it. Phyllis inside. He follows again, and Butler comes out of there. Oh, and that's opportunity. Gary, not a good sign for Navy, though. Four cracks at the basket before, excuse me, that uh, Duke got four cracks at it before Navy was able to get possession. Wojcik picked up his dribble, has to get it off to Liebert, and will have a foul on Allery from behind. And if the early stage of this game means anything, they're calling this one very close as Allery picks up the foul. You mentioned Shusheski. He was 4-1 as a coach against Navy when he was at Army, and he wanted us to know that he never lost to Navy when he was playing at Army. I really enjoyed the press conference yesterday. Mike Shusheski and Paul Evans, they really exhibited a lot of class and had fun with each other. Inside, Danny missed it. Liebert missed the easy shot. Both teams showing maybe a little tension in the early going, missing the easy shots. Well, I thought Lieber played very tight the other night against Cleveland State early in the game. You already see it today. He's had two turnovers and missed an easy layup. Look for Paul Evans to go to the bench. Dawkins doesn't get it. Allery with a fine follow tip. Allery, an all-ACC performer. He's had a splendid year for Mike Krzyzewski's team. 8-4 now. Duke, you see the rebounds, and that's what Doug was talking about. The early going, not going the way Navy would like to have it. Here's Allery on the steal. Allery can play inside. He can play outside. Amaker, he missed an easy one. Butler on the floor will have a held ball, and it will go to Duke. Duke will have the basketball as now two substitutions. Danny Ferry will be checking in, as will Billy King. And we're going to take a break. 14.48 to go in this first half. Duke leads by four. Jerry Bender along with Doug Collins. Doug startingly, look at this. 
14 attempts already for Duke, only five by Navy. That's because of all the multiple shots they're getting off the offensive board. They have six offensive rebounds. Most of those have been second chance opportunities for baskets, but right now zone, uh, the zone defense that Navy's in, they're not blocking out people. They're sort of blocking out areas, and Duke is very quick, and they're getting in those gaps, and they're getting on the boards. You mentioned Liebert being very tight. He's come out of the ball game now. Derek Turner, number 24, a freshman, has checked in for the midshipman. He gives them a little more size along the front line, a better rebounder. Hawkins changing. Ken can't handle it. Maybe we'll have it, and I still feel both these teams just haven't gotten into their game yet. They're both very shaky in this early going. Three turnovers against Duke. Wojcik watch to see if he'll pick up that dribble. That's the thing he's got to watch very carefully. They'll trap him in a hurry. Here's Robinson, and he's fouled. Billy King coming over the back. And so King will commit his first foul, third team foul against Duke. I don't think there are any ships at sea today. All the Navy personnel's here. Great entry pass. That time, Billy King was slow getting over to seal off the baseline. He picked up the foul, but that's the way David Robinson must go to the basket with authority because he's going to be challenged by not necessarily a big front line by Duke, but a quick jumping team. Robinson hits the free throw. Navy is not a good free throw shooting team. Robinson has picked up his stats a little bit in the tournament. He's shooting 63 for the year. He has scored all five of Navy points, looking for number six, and has been characteristic of him all game long. He hits the first and misses the second so often. Again, I feel, Gary, that's a concentration factor because late in the ball game the other night when he needed them both, he got them both. Looking for the gap. Doctor stucks in, gives it to Aller, and we're going to have a foul. That's that gap that you want to penetrate if you possibly can. As picking up the foul was Derek Turner. It'll be his first. So many teams make mistakes when they play against the zone. I say they play east to west. They don't get anything going to the basket. Johnny Dawkins with his quickness. When you slash the gap of a zone like that, you pull two people to you, then you can dish to an open man. You also got Robinson thinking what he should do back there. Here's Allery from outside. Robinson blocked off. The Dawkins very alertly comes up with a rebound and the two points. Robinson had him sealed off but Johnny Dawkins who's an excellent rebounder for a guard was able to score well, the other night he was a leading rebounder for Duke against the Paul I think he had about six or seven offensive rebounds and it comes to Robinson and that foul will go on Ferry Danny Ferry trying to come up his back he commits the foul fourth team foul one thing about Duke, though, they have some versatility. They can spread those fouls out. They can. I think one interesting thing to point out, one of the things Navy has done so well in the tournament is they've gotten into the bonus very early in the half. That's 14 fouls already. We've only played about six and a half minutes, so if they can keep getting inside, they'll shoot a lot of free throws here in the first half. Well, Duke, too. Sometimes it looks a little too slow, but at the end of the game, they'll have eight to ten assists. Very integral part. Gets it off to Robinson. Robinson just spectacular to watch. We said it many times, a young Bill Russell. Isn't it amazing how a player can go through the through the year and be spectacular, and until he gets in the NCAA tournament, no one really knows anybody, uh, knows anything about him. Now they're touting him as, a, as the best player in the country, and he's captured a lot of people's hearts. Allery misses again, Robinson with a rebound. Robinson has all seven of Davies' points. They can cut it to one. Logic. Gets it inside to Butler. Butler's so strong. A workaholic in the lane. He tries to drive, and they'll have a blocking foul this time on Billy King. That'll be his second. 15 foul. Butler, when he gets the ball inside, you're just not going to take it away from him. Well, he leans in very nicely. This is what he likes to do. Watch it. He leans into you to draw the contact. He puts the onus on the official to call either block or charge, and we see Billy King right there. He felt it was a charge. Butler is one of those guys that always seems to get the job done. It's a blue-collar phrase you always use. You don't look at him as a spectacular player, but, oh, he's so integral to this team. Well, to be a part of a great team like Vernon Butler is, you have to be able to play a certain role. He's a very complimentary type player to David Robinson because when Robinson gets all the attention, he just sort of meanders around over there on the offensive board, and at the end of the ball game, you look around and you see, uh-oh, 19 points and 8 rebounds. One of those counterattacks. That's right. Two-point lead now for Duke. 12.53 to go in the first half. Oh, no, they're going to have traveling. 
Instead, Dawkins traveled. Wojcik jumped under him, and Dawkins turns the ball over. That's the fourth. Henderson will come back in. Billy King will leave. Allery is going to leave as Billis comes in. Again, it shows you the flexibility that Coach K has. He can alternate those guys and really can spread the fouls out and, of course, give them the breather they need. 12.45 to go now. Here, I think the point we should make out that where Duke is the toughest is when they make that guard pick the dribble up and close down defensively to cut down passing lanes. Robinson had a wide open shot, but he didn't get anything. Dawkins on the move. Robinson rejected. He's been averaging six blocks a game, which is tops in the nation. Ojik will kick it off to Whitaker. He needs to hit one. That could get him started. It's now 12-10 in favor of Duke. The excitement created by the block of David Robinson. He makes an outstanding block against Johnny Dawkins, and then Whitaker goes down and hits an inspired jump shot. Let's see how this changes the game. 10-10 is Henderson outside. He forced that one. Dawkins, boy, he does a good job inside. Ferry tries to follow. Robinson's committed his second foul. the question is, Doug, will Evans take him out, you think, for a while? I don't believe so. I, I think he's got to go with his horse right now. He's in the point, but Johnny Dawkins, again, on the offensive boards is the one that caused all this. David Robinson, I didn't really see the, the foul there, but David Robinson today, very animated. He's expending a lot of energy. Here is Dawkins from outside. Now it's a 12-10 lead for Duke with 11.53 to go on the first half. See, that's the importance of Duke being able to draw an offensive foul against David Robinson. All of a sudden, he gets one on the defensive end, one on the offensive end. Now he's in a problem where if he picks up that other one, he's in big trouble. Whitaker hit that last shot off to Robinson. He has to be careful on that play. He could have picked up another foul, but you saw his body control. He has nine of Navy's 12. Mr. Robinson. Allery jumping across the middle. Air ball. Butler brings it off to Whitaker. Whitaker with nobody down to rebound. That was not a good shot to take. Danny Ferry will bring it out. 6'10 freshman out of Damatha High School. Let's see if Duke can get something on the inside. They've shot about four or five perimeter jumpers. They need to get it in the inside to Allery. Maybe he can force that uh, third foul against Robinson. Paul Evans shot Henderson to travel to the ball. Ferry missing. They're taking some shots right now. I don't think they want to take. They're playing right now in the Navy's hands. This is exactly what Navy wants. That was a feed that was too tall, even for David Robinson, and Wojcik has committed a foul. Wasn't a bad foul because Dawkins was further up the court. He had an easy two. Good point. If he had not committed that foul, that was an easy layup for Duke. But Doug Wojcik trying to throw the alley-oop pass from about 50 feet that time, and it was just too hard off the glass. David Robinson had no chance to get that one. Wojcik committing his first personal foul. You get the feeling, Doug, that right now Duke is a little impatient. They're a little nervous about this and haven't gotten where they want to be offensively. I think they're feeling the pressure right now. They're supposed to win this basketball game. Right now, Navy should be very loose, realizing that really there's no pressure on them right now. They're going to be in the one-and-one one now. That's the seventh team foul against Navy. Committing the foul was Turner, his second. Well, when you're the hunted team, when you're the top dog, as they like to say, there's some extra pressure that goes with it. That, that's absolutely true. And I, and I saw a Duke team the other night play with a, a, a lack of emotion against the Paul, almost like they were doing a journeyman-like job. They didn't really have the fun that you're supposed to have when you get to this point. And I think that's because they realize they're supposed to be in Dallas next weekend. Allery in the game against DePaul was 9 of 9 from the free throw line. You can see he's just an excellent free throw shooter. And the senior from Scottsdale, Arizona, gets Duke a two-point lead. He was one of the few players who shot well the other night against DePaul. He was 9 for 9 from the free throw line in the ball game on Friday night. Here is Wojcik. Dawkins on him as it goes baseline to Whitaker. Whitaker has it reflected. Turner follows with a power move. Eric Turner out of Park, Virginia, a freshman who started the first nine games of the year for Navy. Lost that starting role, but has come off the bench to be very effective. 14 apiece. Baseline Phyllis and Vernon Butler has committed the foul. Let's go back to this last play by Derek Turner. 
This is what he gives this team, a little more athletic ability than Liebert. He picks up the loose ball, doesn't put it on the floor, a nice power move, and he gets the roll, but Derek Turner could be a real key off the bench today for Navy. He's a better rebounder, gives him a little bit more size and athletic ability. He needs to be in there for uh, Navy to be successful today. However, they need to keep him off the free throw line. He's a 28% free throw shooter. That's the one area he's got to work in. Here is Billis. Billis doesn't get it. Turner tried to keep it alive, and Duco reloads. Ten minutes to go now. First half, 14 apiece. Danny Ferry, a good perimeter shooter. He's looking for the jump shot. And he tries to skip it through. Robinson has it, and that'll be a foul on Ferry over the back of Derek Turner. That's how Robinson can be so effective, Doug. Those are things that aren't in the scoreboard or in the box score because the chain shots in a defensive play like this. Well, he gets his arms up. He gets he gets nice reaction there. I thought a foul was committed before that, but finally the foul on Danny Ferry. Robinson helping select the foul E out. We'll be back. It's all even at 14. Paul D.I. The red job over there, Pierre. Oh, Italian, monsieur. Huh? Picked it up in America, actually. The Americans, they make such a car. Yeah, it's extraordinary. I'm a pumps here. The new Fiero GT, mid-engine, fuel-injected V6 and all that. Oh, it looks like a billion francs. I'll be in Tokyo. Uh, give my regards to the princess. Ce n'est pas, mais oui, la nouvelle Pontiac Fiero GT. Oui, the excitement of Pontiac. Next Sunday on CBS Sports. We're halfway through the first half. It's even at 14. Neither team shooting very well, especially Duke. And look at the rebounds as you pick up this reject shot by David Robinson. Well, here's two All-Americans going at it. Johnny Dawkins challenging David Robinson. David Robinson checks the shot nicely. It starts a Navy fast break, and that's where Kyler Whitaker was able to spot up in the corner and get his first jump shot. If Navy could get on the offensive boards, Doug, they could really do something this game. They have not picked up one offensive rebound. Duke has nine. Well, the rebound advantage, 18-6 to six right now for, for Duke, and you said nine offensive rebounds, so half of the rebounds coming on the offensive glass. Duke has taken ten more shots than Navy thus far. Robinson... Phyllis rips it out of there, the senior out of Rolling Hills, California. Started out the year hurt, he's had to battle back into this lineup, but he has given him some real toughness inside. It's tied at 14. Hawkins, there's that gap. Out it comes to Amaker. Amaker was 0 for 5 in the first half Friday night and not shooting well this afternoon. There's another offensive rebound, Tommy Amaker. That's 10 offensive rebounds now for Duke. Butterworth are coming outside, though, in all fairness to me, where Robinson could be ineffective. Now this one is ripped down and out, where he's showing his strength, and Robinson almost picked up his third foul. Well, 11 offensive rebounds now, two on that occasion. Gary, when you talk about the ball kicking back long, that's where the Navy guards have to get back and pick up those long rebounds. They can't cheat out on the break against this Duke team. Here's Wojcik. He won't shoot very often, but he hit it. Wojcik this year averaging just over five points a game. Duke has 10 second chance points, maybe zero, because they don't have any rebounds. 16 apiece, another steal by Robinson. Boy, he just alters everybody's game. He's had 30, 35 point games, 22 point game, nine block shots Friday, leading the nation in rebounding and block shots, and he just funneled that one in. Great play there by Doug Wojcik. Johnny Dawkins normally puts terrific ball pressure. That time he gave Doug Wojcik the time and the eye contact to be able to pick David Robinson alley-oop to the basket. That was a beautiful play. I've heard of tough passes, but touch shots? <laughs> That's exactly what that was. Second lead of the game now for Navy. The 
The zone and Navy is top. Henderson will try one. The rebound, Whitaker. That's what I was talking about. Kyler Whitaker went back in and attacked the boards and got the rebound. He has enough size, Gary, to go in and be a presence on the board. He is 6'6". Derek Turner will replace Liebert. He's been a good substitution. And the Butler. Mr. Robinson did not. Offensive rebound and it went for two. Allery missing. Phyllis has it. He missed it. They know Robinson's in the vicinity. Allery then gets one off the glass. Good tenacity by this Duke team. When you're not shooting well, you got to keep battling, and they're doing that. I really give Dave Robinson a lot of credit too. He's picking his spots when he goes for shots. He's not trying to block everything, or otherwise he'd have his third foul by now. Turner intended for Robinson. It's hit the glass instead. Butler's got it. Whitaker. They lean in by Kyler, and that'll be a charge on Kyler Whitaker. That's his first personal foul. Well, let's look at the first offensive rebound of the game. To say it's spectacular would be an understatement. Look at the timing on David Robinson. He gets it below the rim and still has the presence and the ability to go up and dunk it home with two hands. You know, sometimes though, Navy forgets to go to their guy who is so automatic. On that last play, Whitaker could have very easily laid the ball off. Also, too, against his Duke team, you've got to go up vertically. You can't go horizontally. They'll step in and take the charge. You must pull up and take the jump. Amateur, and he hits one. Hamaker's first two points. And we're even at 20, 6.20 to go in the first half. Seventh tie of this game. Dorothy popped to Whitaker. I see Ferry playing tough on Robinson inside. He's doing a good job of fronting David Robinson, and they almost had the lob there, but didn't quite get it going. Here's Robinson, shoots off, and can he hang on? He cannot. That is eight turnovers against the midshipman. That was a tough angle on that pass by Wojcik. We can see, Gary, in that position, they like to run Butler up high, swing the ball, and then let Robinson float to the basket. Butler was not able to see him, although David Robinson, I thought, was open. They had one earlier that looked better, but they elected not to take it and then tried the difficult one. Here's Allery. He can shoot from there. Mark Allery, his great maturity four years in this program really evident here this afternoon he's playing with confidence duke by two Vernon butler and he overshoots it that's not the vernon butler we've seen he usually nails that one amaker with wojcik back he leans in and that's another charge on Tommy Amaker. When we look at Doug Wojcik, he is exhausted right now. He's bringing the ball up the floor against Tommy Amaker the whole ball game to get him in their offense and doing a good job of it. That time taking the offensive foul, he'll shoot a one and one, but that young man is going to be tired when this ball game is over. Well, the interesting point is, as we see Nate Bailey coming into the ball game, the interesting point in this game is that Wojcik has had to put the ball on the floor. Now, when they played against Cleveland State, they didn't want to do that, and you don't expend the energy when you're playing the pressure defense. When you pass over the top of a zone defense against a man-to-man -man defense, you sometimes, or you most times, have to beat it with the dribble. Really, Doug Wojcik is the only man on this Navy team capable of doing that, so he has the total responsibility of getting them into their half-court offense. Boy, he took a long time to go to the free-throw line, getting every precious second he can. He's a good free-throw shooter, but he's just tired. That's why he missed that free-throw. He is tired, as you said, and he tried to get a, a little bit of a rest there, but just not enough. Well, that'll be a big story to watch. Navy last year at Maryland beat them the second round, only to run out of gas. Guys like Wojcik just stay in there stamina-wise. Billy King on the follow. And it's a four-point lead by the top-ranked team in the country. Let's see if they run their high-low set this time, try to maybe get the ball into David Robinson. Look for the high-low from Whitaker. Maybe to Robinson. Whitaker, tough shot. Duke is on an 8-0 run right now. Navy's missed a couple of easy shots. Dawkins got set. Followed by Allery. Mark Allery is carrying this team right now. The last five minutes, Paul Evans wants a timeout. A 10-0 run by Duke. And the Blue Devils now enjoy a six-point lead. Four and a half to go in the first half. There's no such thing as a small business. Not when it's yours. So my insurance agent has to protect my business and my family without wasting my time or my money. An agent with a... Foot. ...to stem this momentum that Duke has built up as they've run off 10 unanswered points. They lead 26-20.
We talked about Wojcik being tired, but I also get the feeling that right now Duke has maybe taking some shots. A moment ago, Whitaker shouldn't be taking. Well, Mike Krzyzewski told us yesterday that he wanted Navy improvising on offense, not being able to run their half-court offense, but forcing guys to do something they're not comfortable doing. Whitaker did at that time, took a tough shot, and Duke was off to the races. Wojcik got a breather. It looks like he's revived a little bit. Derek Turner will duck inside, and he has fouled as he made his move. No basket. The basket will not count. And at the 4.26 mark, Turner, who is a very poor free throw shooter, will be going to the line. Billy King committed his third foul, so he's the first in to get into foul difficulty. Turner, we mentioned, is shooting only 28%. He's 11 of 40. He looks at that ball like he doesn't like it. And he missed it. Robinson got it. And he'll reload it. He doesn't get that. Up to Ferry. Tough shot, and Ferry's equal to it. That's tough for a big man to pull up like that and hit it. Well, he did, and if he hadn't, if he would have picked up the foul, but maybe right now. This is a very, very important possession. they got to get the ball to David Robinson. He's the only man who's now giving them any scoring. Biggest lead of the game, this is Cliff Reese, who's checked in, number 44. That's not his shot. They are not set well, but Robinson will be able to erase that error. Well, they needed that one. That's only their second opportunity on the offensive board. They have four points off the offensive boards. On the other hand, Duke, 15 offensive rebounds for 16 points. Robinson with 15 points himself. Dawkins from outside. Robinson rips it down. Now Robinson, he is uh, taking his time getting up the floor. He cannot play a solid 40 minutes of the breakneck pace that is demanded in a game like this. Well, they, it's very difficult to rest against Duke because they keep such pressure on you as you see right there with the turnover by Allerick. Nine turnovers. 28-22, Duke. 315 to go. You see the turnovers in this first half. There is that little gap again, and Dawkins misfires. Mallory does not. Mallory right now is just playing superbly. He has 14 points. David Robinson did a great job coming over, forcing Johnny Dawkins to take the tough shot, but nobody stepped in to rebound after David Robinson went after the shot. Mallory's their leading rebounder, averaging over six a game following with that one. Navy needs a basket. They trail by eight. They swing it high. They can get it inside to uh, David Robinson. If they can swing it up top, he's got good position. There is Cliff Reese, who missed a shot a while ago. The lean in, that again is not their shot, but Butler tries to follow. King blocked it, and we're going to have a held ball, and it will go to Navy. Again, Doug, it may seem like an overstatement, but Navy's not the lean-in, driving-type team. They've got to set square off and shoot the ball. That's exactly right. That's why Mike Krzyzewski said he wanted them improvising, because when you force a guy to put the ball on the floor when he's not used to it, he will not feel comfortable when he gets the area to take the shot. And so coming in now is seven foot two Martin Nestler. He did not play in Friday's game, but they're going to try to maybe wear and tire Robinson down with his big hole. <laughs> He's got a big black eye, too, where he got cracked the other day in practice. And he get, looks like he's got four or five stitches under his eye. But right now, we're seeing Duke into a 2-3 zone. Let's see if, uh, with uh, Tyler Whitaker being out of the ball game, who's going to shoot the outside jump shot? Krzyzewski's team do not play a zone very often because Krzyzewski's schooled by Bob Knight. And he said, we'll try it and see what it does. Sometimes he says it hurts our intensity to play a zone. I think right now, just trying to get a little rest, trying to change maybe what maybe he's looking for. Reese takes a very difficult shot. He's tried three shots, and they've been difficult at best. 30-22, Duke. Whitaker will check back in to Navy's lineup at the first opportunity. A minute 30 to go in the first half. Henderson on the move. Rebound, Dawkins. He is such a quick leaper. Everybody's on the way down, and he's still up. Paul Evans going to the bench right now, realizing with his own defense they need Tyler Whitaker back in the ball game. It might be a little too late, only a minute to go in the first half. They might not get another possession. Turner has it batted away. Off to Dawkins. What are the 
most decorated players in Duke's history. They retired his number. He's won it all this year, and that's why. What a spectacular play. Duke on an 18-2 spurt since trailing 20 to 16. Amazing how this game has turned around. Reese will try again. He's 0 for 4 now. Every shot that Navy has taken in about the last seven or eight minutes has been a shot. They've had a hand in their face. They've had to put it on the floor to create. That's why Duke has been able to run this spurt. They've just put great defensive pressure on this Navy ball club. And Gary, I think fatigue has really been a factor. Navy was really playing well. I thought they got tired, and they've hit one of their last nine shots. Well, you thought in practice they looked tired yesterday. Yes, I sure did. I, I sensed a team that was very, very tired. Dawkins, he is something to watch. Rebounds, he's on this shot. Puts this one up, and the first half has come to a close. Well, the top-ranked team in the country certainly has disappointed no one here. Duke leading at halftime, 34-22 over Navy. CBS Sports coverage of NCAA basketball will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Bill, what is happening on the offensive boards? Why can't Navy stop it? Well, 2-3 zone, you check out in an area and occasionally two people will be there you can't have individual responsibility and Duke very aggressive on the glasses we'll see here Mark Allery missing the jumper and Robinson with two fouls has to be concerned really does not challenge Dawkins as much as I'm sure he would like to all right and Duke has 20 of their 34 points on second chance opportunities now the second game today will be down in Kansas City that is of course between Kansas and North Carolina State for the Midwest Regional Championship now for a live report let's go down to Brent Musburger and Bill Billy Packer. All right, Jim and Bill, let's first talk about the injury situation here, Billy. How about Ron Kellogg of the Kansas Jayhawks? Well, he has a foot injury, Brandon. What's so difficult about that? Larry Brown didn't have to use him on Friday as much, or didn't want to use him as much as he had to, and now you only have one day rest. It could be very difficult for him to come back and play, and they need him, obviously, from the outside shooting standpoint. Calvin Thompson with the cramps, he should be all right for Larry Brown. He should be all right, but when a guy cramps up in a ball game, and again, only one day rest, uh, who knows what he's going to do in a game like this. All right, these two teams played back in December. It was a blowout. Kansas pulling away in the second half, but North Carolina State's improved. Let's show you one of the reasons why. The young man in the middle, Chris Washburn. You're going to see a move right here that exemplifies what a great athlete he is. At six foot ten or 11, here's a double pump inside the lane, a good soft shot. There are not many guys in the college level, or maybe for that matter, in the NBA level at that size can make that play. Ask a pro scout to draft for potential, and he would take either Washburn or Danny Manning, number one. Manning, of course, is the leading scorer for the Jayhawks, number 25. May be the most gifted all-around collegiate basketball player in the game right now. He's a big guy who plays like a small guy. Six foot ten, terrific ball handler, great inside shooter. It's just a matter of how explosive he's going to be in this game today. Larry Brown is favored. Jim Valvano, though, is always there at the end of the game. Let's go back now to Jim Nance. All right, thank you for that game, of course, right uh, around 4 o'clock Eastern time, tipping off the Midwest Regional Championship. And we'll have an update on the women's tournament when we continue right after this. buy a Nissan 300ZX, you buy a legend, a tradition of many. Maybe have to do well, maybe that. we'll have to play some man-to-man. -man. They don't like to. And, of course, Robinson with two. They're in trouble. All right. Duke looking good. Again, an 18-2 run to finish up the first half for Duke. They lead by 12. We'll go back to the second half in just a moment. long years of development and you're stuck at home again next year there's only one place to be for this basketball classic celebrate the final four in new orleans find out how to order your 87 final four tickets write the ncaa or call 913-362-1987 call today 913-362-1987 and we'll see you in new orleans this message furnished by the ncaa with an 18-2 run at the tail end of the first half with a 34-22 halftime lead. Doug, let's go back to the keys that we talked about at the start of this broadcast. Well, I think it's important, Gary, when we look at the top of the show, we talked about that Duke needed to shut down Butler and Whitaker, and they need to get on the offensive boards. 
they have really done a job in both of those areas in the first half. Well, Whitaker and Butler, look at this. Three points. They're one of eight combined in their shooting. Well, they were forced to put the ball on the floor and improvise, Gary. That's not the kind of players they are. They're more players that deal off what Robinson gives him. Duke would not give it to him. Okay, offensive rebounds. This is another area that Duke has just dominated. Well, Duke, 18 offensive rebounds to four for Navy. I think that sort of tells the story what the uh, defensive rebounds for uh, Navy was. And look at the second chance points off of those rebounds. 20 to four. The difference in the ball game right now is 12 points. So if Navy could get on the defensive backboard, they could get back into this game. Well, we're going to show you now an example of how tenacious they've been on the boards. Well, David Henderson shoots a tough shot here and on the offensive boards who comes flying in there the all-american johnny dawkins and he and mark allery just killed navy on the offensive board well one of the other keys was the key not to stop david robinson robinson has 15 of the 22 points well he has his 15 points navy has struggled to get points from anybody else if they're going to get back in the game whitaker and butler have to get in the offense david robinson cannot do it alone Duke is so good at these spurts as Navy scored only two points the last 7-17 of that first half. CBS Sports coverage of NCAA basketball will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Championship and right now, Duke is torpedoing the Navy ship. Look at this. Robinson with 15 of the 22. Allery was superb. He had five rebounds also to go with those 14 points. Dawkins did not shoot well, Doug. He was 4 of 15 from the field. And in the rebounding department, Dawkins had seven, which shows you how good a rebounding guard he is. Well, I think the interesting stat, when you look at the Navy field goals, they had ten in the first half. David Robinson got seven of them, which tells you, it just points out that, you know, Whitaker and Butler, they're two big offensive keys for Navy. They've got to get it untracked here in the second half. Give him some help. Duke with that 18-2 rip with a 12-point lead at the halfway point. Henderson, and he's fouled by Wojcik, who reached in. That will be his second foul. You know, Gary, another thing that's been so good to Navy all year long, they've beaten teams on the free throw line. First half, they shot only two for six, and two of those misses were the front ends of one and ones. Allerial inbounds to Henderson. Amaker in the first half. Not all that effective offensively, but he does some of the subtle things. He was one of five in the shooting department. Amaker has not shot well in this entire tournament. He was 0 for 5 in the first half of the game Friday night against DePaul. There's Dawkins, and when you're a good shooter, you don't have a 4 or 15 first half bother you at all. Well, he came out looking for that first shot, got a nice roll against the, uh, against the rim in the backboard, but again, attacking his own defense, and Johnny Dawkins not afraid to put up that outside jump shot. Up to a 14-point lead, and there's the shot that Whitaker could have. He squared up, and he had his feet under him, and you saw the end result. Well, Paul Evans, I'm sure, said to his team at halftime, look, we're not going to beat him with a one-man show, David Robinson. We've got to get something going for Kyler. Nice screen off the, off the jump shot. Allery, that one just find the mark. Whitaker on the move. Baseline, and the man who started out so shaky, Carl Lieber. They'll give him some confidence. He really had a shaky beginning to the game, and second half, cuts it to 10. I would imagine Paul Evans was talking about Navy discipline. And boys, they lost it there in the tail end of that first half. Here is Dawkins. He can hurt you from every area of the floor. Vernon Butler was standing there waiting to take the charge, and Johnny Dawkins with a slashing move and great body control just sidestepped him and kissed it off the glass. That's why he's an All-American. Averaging almost 20 points a game. National Player of the Year in the Naismith Award. Here at his Bojic. He's not the guy they want shooting the ball, and that's going to be a foul on Liebert over the back. That's his third. King has three for Duke. Liebert now has three for Navy. Wojcik will not shoot very often. He does not like to take the shots. And so what does he do? He has the air ball as they're trying to play some catch-up. You know, we look at personal fouls against Duke in the first half. They're inside people. Henderson with one, Allery one, Phyllis none, so they can really gamble on the inside. There's Henderson picking up a foul. A charge, his second. Navy will inbounds. You know, when you're playing as well, it's awfully hard sometimes to not let a lot of that clock get away from you when you're playing catch-up like this. The Navy can't afford to ever go to a man. Oh, they just can't match up. There's no way Wojcik and Whitaker go go against uh, Dawkins and Amaker. That would be a total mismatch. Here's Robinson inside and have a foul on Phyllis. 
Billis reaching in and committing only his first foul. Billis, by the way, wants to be a television sportscaster. Does some of the games on the Duke cable stations. I talked to him yesterday. I told him to go into play-by-play. -play. Don't even think about being an analyst. <laughs> go too all, tall for an analyst. Go where all the money is, play-by-play. -play. I should say too tall for a play-by-play -play guy is what I meant. <laughs> Here is Whitaker in the inbound. 38-26, Robinson, nice pass for Washington. That's Navy's game. Good execution of a set play, a nice little bounce pass to David Robinson. He gathered himself and got it in off the glass. You know, they're looking at only a 10-point deficit right now. A couple baskets, they can be right back in the ball game. Bojic averaging over seven assists a game. Mallory follows powerful move. He is stock has gone up so much. Many of the pro scouts tell you he's the number three forward in the draft right now, and he wasn't the number one draft pick at the beginning of the year. He's come on. He's all ACC as a sophomore, second team last year, and making the first team again this season. Well, they won't let Whitaker get his feet under him if they can keep him coming at all. And there's Allery breaking it up. And it, he claims it was off of Navy, but it will be off of Allery. David Robinson right now telling Liebert, I was open for the little soft alley-oop pass. When you get it up high-low, look for me floating to the basket because he has his man pinned. He gets Billis in front of him, and then when he swings, he's behind him. He has a nice little alley-oop possibility. And it goes to Robinson. Allery trying to draw the foul, but he did make him change the shot, and then we'll have a foul on Vernon Butler. Good job that time, jumping behind him, and Robinson was leaning a little off balance and didn't get the shot to go. David Robinson really looks disgusted right now. This is what happens there. You see them seal down on David Robinson so quickly. They play sort of three-quarter in the post there. Billis gets up, tries to deny the pass, and the baseline pass is made. The weak side defensive man pinches down. And it's a tough play for David Robinson. Man. Here's Dawkins hitting again, so he's coming on now, that outside game. And now we're going to have a warning for delay of game as Duke knocking the ball inadvertently out into the playing court, so maybe he'll reload it inadvertently so they could get they could get their press set up here <laughs> <laughs> depends on which side you look That's at right, it, right? <laughs> Phyllis, by the way has not scored in this game but he's collected nine rebounds shows you how effective he can be as he stays tough with robinson again but david will be denied there back to a 12 point lead now for duke 19 points for robinson baseline billis and we have a foul on robinson that'll be his third We've done three games with Navy in the last week, and I, this is the first time I've seen David Robinson get caught in the air on a pump fake. Let's watch him. He goes up, boom, he gets hung in the air. That's the first time I've seen him in three ball games leave his feet and draw a foul on a play like that. He sense he's really right now upset. He was upset a couple of trips down the floor. You said so well, what he does is he waits till the ball leaves the hand, and that's what your great shot blockers do. Well, I sense an uh, anxiety along David Robinson right now that uh, he feels time slipping away, and he's, he knows he's the only man right now scoring, and he's going to try to make up for it at both ends. And, Gary, there's just no way that one man can beat this good team. He's got to get some help from his teammates. Billis, not a good free throw shooter, but he hit both of those. He was shooting 59%. 14-point lead now for the Blue Devils. Looking for their 20th straight win. They lost two in a row, and he's going to see play never lost since. Out it comes to Dockers. They have a four on one, and Wojcik broke it up. Great defensive play. He was out man. Here's Whitaker, and again, that's not his shot. The lean in of Wojcik, that's a frustration foul. I thought Kyler Whitaker took one too many dribbles that time, Gary. He took it as close as he could get it to the basket, and when he did, he never got himself squared. He was floating to the basket, pull up and maybe use that glass. I think he was just a little anxious that time, and maybe making a substitution. That's Cliff Reese who checks in. Whitaker with his 23-point game and that win against Cleveland State. It was his third 20-point game of the season, but talking to Mike Krzyzewski, you got the feeling he was going to have a tough time getting a shot. There's a beautiful assist from Amaker to Dawkins. How many guards you see do that? How about against the zone? He floats right behind it, and the man that he alley-ooped over was David Robinson. Usually alley-ooped to a forward or a center, that's not their, Duke. That's their favorite play, Amaker and Dawkins. They love to lob pass to each other. Biggest lead of the game, 16. Robinson has it broken up. Allery is just playing outstanding defense. He is giving Robinson fits. And then comes Phyllis. So that one-two effort inside has made David work for everything. And the guy who has carried him all year long, 
must feel a little deserted offensively in this game. You know, I think that we got to give credit where credit is due to. The reason that Whitaker and Butler are not factors offensively is because Duke is not letting them be factors. Allery, a terrific defensive job. Johnny Dawkins, a terrific defensive job on Whitaker. So they've done a great job. Hebert and Robinson tries to save it. Somehow he does to Butler. Butler has his shot changed by Allery, and Allery commits a foul. That's two on Allery. And Butler, who usually takes the ball to the glass with authority, you can see is looking around a little bit. He's had to change those shots. He missed it, but will go to the free throw line. As now Bailey will come back into the ball game, and sitting down will be Liebert. Vernon Butler. He's the all-time leading scorer and rebounder at Navy. Three-time All-Conference. He's just been an outstanding player. He was a captain as a junior. First time in 24 years in Annapolis. And then captain again this year in his senior campaign. Solid at 6-7. And he missed the second. Guess who's there? Allery. Seven rebounds for Allery. 46-31 Duke. Duke does it kind of in a business-like fashion, don't they? They just sort of wear you down. I think they're a team of spurts. I didn't realize that they hit you with such quick spurts until I saw them the other night against DePaul. They really do a good job in the last five, six minutes of the first half and then coming out of the gate quickly in the second half. Those are normally the ten important minutes of a ball game, and they are super at it. Very early in the second half. Phyllis makes it now 10-3 run at the beginning of the second half. Four points for Billis. So it was an 18-2 run at the end of the half, and now a 10-3 run at the at the first part of the second half, so we can see where Duke is, is, is winning this ball game. Look at Allery hustle defensively. That pass intended for Butler. He had a hand on it. Derek Turner will come in, but right now we're going to take a break. 14 minutes, 19 seconds left to go. The top-ranked team in the country, Duke, playing well. Wins in his season. They have really done a good job on this particular play all year long, and very few teams have a guard-to-guard alley-oop. Well, watch Amaker. He takes it to the other side of the floor, and here's Johnny Dawkins sneaking in behind David Robinson. David Robinson not realizing where he was at, and you know, that's sort of reminiscent of a young man named David Thompson when he was at North Carolina State. That's the only other guard I can think that could alley-oop to like Johnny Dawkins. He goes back to 1974, so there haven't been a lot of those guys. Is it that long ago? <laughs> well, you're getting old. <laughs> Working with you can do that. <laughs> Duke is 32-11 and 11 since the 7-17 mark of the first half. They take this game over. Robinson tries to follow on the miss. Thirteen fifty-two left in the game. Duke trying to become the third team to go to Dallas. Louisville and LSU claiming those spots yesterday. They would play the winner of the North Carolina State Kansas game in Reunion Arena. See, Gary, the tough thing for Navy right now is they're not a team that can come out and press you and force turnovers. They, so it's very difficult for them to get back in the ball game unless Duke just absolutely falls asleep and starts making a lot of mistakes. That's the point I was making. You stay in the zone. That's not a catch-up thing to do. Duke right now has this game where they want it. Bailey tries to dribble, and Henderson comes up with it. Henderson off to Dawkins. Donnie Dawkins with 18. Allery with 16 points. The two of them with seven rebounds each. They have been the offensive force. A one-two punch for Duke in this game. They've also been the defensive force, because they've been the ones that have shut down Whitaker and Butler, so they've carried the offense and the defense. Tells you a little bit about their all-round play. It's Wojcik taking the shot. That shows you how frustrated they are. Wojcik shooting, and the offensive rebounds. Look at this. The rebounds total, 41-17. I don't believe I've ever seen that big a margin. No, nor have I. <laughs> and the offensive rebounding, that is the killer, because it, it usually... Uh, Involve layups on second shot opportunities. Inside Allery. Mark Allery makes it 52 31. 18 points for Allery. Boy, if you're Paul Evans, you must be sitting over there. What in the world can I do in a game like this? Five and there's seconds. five seconds on Wojcik. Amaker playing the good defense. Butler coming in. Whitaker's coming in. Paul Evans trying to find some combination of the work. Look at Mark Allery getting position inside 
I tell you, the versatility of this young man, he can score inside, he can score outside, he'll defend you, he gets to the offensive boards. What a great player. Paul Evans has had an unbelievable year, 30 and 4, and right now he probably has forgotten about all those successes. He is suffering right now. You have that feeling right now when you look up at the clock and you know nothing's going right for you, you just want the time to expire. Still in that zone, also in the game for the first time, is Neil Fenton, number four. That's a nice turnover against Duke. Mele will get it into Butler. Butler laying in. That's a charge. No basket. That's three on Butler. Vernon Butler was the first recruit for Paul Evans as he started to build this Navy program. He's been such a solid performer, but today he has run into this Duke juggernaut. You can see why Duke has been the number one ranked team in the country. They have met all comers. They won the preseason NIT, defeating Kansas in the championship game. They won the ACC regular season, the ACC tournament. They've done it all. It's been a spectacular year, but they won't be successful, they feel, unless they win it all. That's the kind of pressure you put on yourself. They're just using time right now. They're spreading it out, trying to use as much of that clock as possible. Then you get Mr. Dawkins, and he takes it right to Gap and shoots it right in your face. 20 points for Dawkins. I thought Krzyzewski said it well. There's not very many Johnny Dawkins. Not in your lifetime. I don't remember him missing the shot in the second half after going 4 for 15 in the first half. Foul before the shot. He has. He's been red hot in that second half. go on Billy King, I believe. Nope, check it. Phyllis. Phyllis will be the guilty party. It'll be his second. Fourth team foul now against Duke. And it comes Butler. That's where he does such good work. That's one of the few times he's been able to get inside and do that. He has only four points. That's his first field goal. His other two points coming from the line. Well, they play... 30 minutes almost before Butler's able to score from the field, and you think they shut him down? Oh, <laughs> you know, I, I give Mike Krzyzewski a lot of credit. You know, a lot of people feel like that to beat Navy, you've got to do the job against David Robinson. He knows he's such a great player, he's going to score his points, and he's really concentrating on the other people, and I think he's told the story. There's Dawkins, seemingly always quicker than everybody else. He gets the ball, and everybody else is in the same vicinity. He gets it up quickly. He just does everything at super quickness pace. I sense a feeling of Duke that they're on their way to Dallas. They're looking like they're having some fun now, Jerry. Before the other night, we talked about workmanlike effort. I sense sort of enthusiasm come about as they know they're on their way to Dallas. That shot by Whitaker was indicative of the play at against Cleveland State. Look at the second half shooting, 77%, 10 of 13 from the field. in any hurry and I guess Paul Evans will have to decide whether he's just going to stay in the zone or try to come out and make something happen but they just don't have the quickness to do it and there is going to be a foul and it's going to go on Ferry Ferry committing his third personal foul Mallory will come back in and while he comes in we're going to leave for a moment 9.20 to go Duke winning impressively Knight Lights, rain, you know the feeling, wondering if you could stop if you had to. But now there's Arcot, Bridgestone's surprising Arcot S371 radio. Well, and Kansas won that game, but Charles Shackelford, their freshman who's played so well, was making his first appearance. He has come on strong. Jim Valvano's team wondering again if there's some Cinderella still in that club. You have to also think about the win Kansas got the other night against Michigan State. It looked like the lights were going to be turned out in Kansas, and they made a miraculous finish to win that ball game in overtime. Does that help you sometimes, or do you think it hurts you? I think it helps you. You know, you almost start looking like, hey, guys, uh, let's just keep it going. We've got things going our way kind of thing. And, uh, hey, Gary, anytime you win to stay alive, I think it's, it's got to give you a, a, a good feeling. 56-35, but you'd like to win without controversy, wouldn't you? Oh, yes. Here is Robinson with a lean in. David Robinson with 21. 
Uh, Navy's 37, 56, 37. Dawkins in the second half. We were talking about he was 4 of 15 in the first half. Doug, in the second half, he's hit 7 of 8. That's why great players keep shooting. You don't ever look at the stat sheet at halftime. You come out and you say, it's a different half. I'm a different player. I'm going to keep shooting. And you say, I have no conscience. That's exactly right. You say, I must put it up. And the worst thing that can happen be that I would miss. Baseline goes out early. Tries to follow Doug. That's power basketball. Rebound now by Billis. <laughs> and Billis is fouled. Well, at the conclusion of this broadcast, Doug Collins and I will be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game from each team. And Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. We may have to give it to three guys on Duke where they're playing right now. 21 shots. Paul Evans, who's been rumored to be heading possibly to some other pastures, other coaching jobs, and uh, I think that little shake of the head pretty well epitomizes how he feels. Billis with four points, but ten rebounds and an air ball. Uh, Jay Billis has a great sense of humor. He said, you know, they're always talking about Duke being soft at center, but he says, you know something? He said, I have a lack of height, but I make up with my lack of quickness. <laughs> He's got, uh, he's got some big arms on him, so he can back it up with those things, too. They, Phyllis and Allery, they were really tough inside in this game. They have fronted. They have made it difficult each time Davies tried to move the ball inside. There's Amaker. Did not see Bailey, and Bailey comes up with the turnover, and off to David Robinson. Oh, he missed the stuff. Butler, and we're going to have a foul on Amaker. I think that last shot sort of epitomizes the day that Navy's had. Look at David Robinson. You expect him a little dunk here. He dunks it so hard the ball pops out. And then on the second shot, the basket's still shaking from where he tried to dunk it. And Vernon Butler missed an easy layup. Now he's got to go earn it at the free throw line. But I still love David Robinson. Oh, man. I told him yesterday if he ever needs an adopted family, I'll take him right now. His brother, Chucky, was here earlier. He's going to be a heck of a player. He's a eighth grader and he's got the biggest hands and feet he'll probably be at least 6'10". well they don't want him to grow here at the navy academy they want him to be about 6'6 until he's a senior in high school get into the academy and grow four or five inches like david they have quite a daddy ambrose who's a 20-year veteran of the navy in fact initially didn't want david to go to the academy but now of course very proud of his son and of course his son's going to be back next year he is a junior there's the time left in the game. It's been all Duke. After trailing 20 to 16, they made that 18 to 2 spurt, and it's been the Blue Devils all the way. Perry tries to follow. Bailey will bring it out. And we have a collision. Billis and Dawkins both colliding. Committing the foul is going to be Johnny Dawkins, and the one and one now for Nathan. 17 foul. Looks like Dawkins may have caught something on his forehead. A little shaken. And so we're going to have a timeout called by Duke. We want to check over there, All-America. His first personal foul. 7.37 left to go in the game. If you aren't impressed with Duke before, you got to be today. Interesting that Krzyzewski said, he says he lets the game come to him. He doesn't force it. He lets the game come to him and take what he gets. Well, I think that's important when you're a great player because especially the defenses and the gimmick things that he sees. I'm sure he's seen boxing one, triangle two, every kind of gimmick defense. And you have a tendency as an offensive player to get frustrated and try to force things. That's a credit that he does not do those things. Navy able to get the rebound up from this shot. Tough pass by Whitaker Robinson misses it. And he wasn't missing those earlier. Some of the frustration. Dawkins today with 22 points, seven rebounds, three assists. And with 7-17 between Duke and a trip to Dallas. Actually, Navy right now playing a gimmick defense. They're dogging Johnny Dawkins man-to-man -man with Neil Fenton, and the rest of the team is playing sort of a triangle or a matchup zone defense. Now it looks to me like they're going to call it out and try to start chasing. With them being behind, they're going to have to start coming out. One of our keys was Navy to start well. They did well for a while. It's 2016, but now they're just not a good catch-up team. Zone, they've got to stand for the lack of quickness. Anderson will pop one from outside. Rebound, Robinson. 10 for David. 
who averaged over 13 a game, the top in the country. Whitaker wheeling in there. He's got his feet set, and he gets two shots. When Whitaker's form looks good, you just know that ball's going in. Eight points for Tyler Whitaker. Excellent outside shooter. He's a soap opera puck. Also is the video game most valuable player. Nobody can beat him on this team when he plays the video game. <laughs> hand-eye coordination. That's what it takes, I guess. Well, Duke is doing exactly what they have to do. Just take some time off the clock. Everything in their hands right now as we're inside six minutes to go. The tie, the all-time winning record for wins in the season with the victory here as Whitaker tried to sneak in, but he commits a foul his second. That's a long time ago, Doug. You know, what's interesting about their record, Kentucky winning 36 in 1948. They didn't play as many games that many years ago. You know, for Duke to win the NCAA tournament this year, they're going to have to go 38-2. They're going to play 40 ball games. In my entire, entire college career, I couldn't play as a freshman. In my entire college career, I did never miss the game and only played 77 games. These guys have played over 120 games in their career. That's a lot of basketball. At the line. This guy, a junior, will be a much bigger scorer next year for Coach K. He has his capabilities, but he's had to take the role of playing the good defense, the point guard, and let Dawkins do the scoring. He has three points. Washington High School DC Player of the Year, the senior year. 58-41. Neil Fenton, one of the many freshmen played in this game for Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Whitaker, there's the good form, but this time not the shot. Butler is fouled by Henderson. David Henderson with his third personal foul. Let's talk about this Duke team. They beat North Carolina State in ACC play. They defeated Kansas in the NIT final. So, uh, They've got to feel pretty good about the semifinal game in Dallas right now. Well, Gary, you know, I go on, you know, what teams have, you know, the ingredients to me to, to, to be a Final Four team. And I think we talked about it to start the tournament. Number one, good coaching. They have that in Mike Krzyzewski. Number two, they have a go-to guy, a guy who can get them the basket when they need it. Obviously, they got two of them. They got Allery and they got Johnny Dawkins. Do they shoot good free throws? Yes. Do they play outstanding man-to-man -man defense? Yes. I like the total package. The total package might win it all, Mr. Thomas. Five and a half to go here. For the year, Paul's shooting 71% from the free throw line to back up your theory and your point. Five, 15 left to go. This is frustrating. Navy had such a glorious season. And yet, uh, to be out of this game so early and really not capable physically to do anything about it. I think they have to keep this all in perspective, Gary, what they've been able to do. Robinson with another rejection, his second. They'll give it to Whitaker. Whitaker again from the corner. Bailey comes down with it, and he throws up a desperation shot, and he's called for traveling. Well, Navy walked through that Syracuse region effectively, beating Syracuse in the Carrier Dome in a tough game, surviving a last-second shot by Cleveland State, running into Duke, the top seed, and certainly no one gave him a, much of a shot to get this far, and obviously overmatched here today. Well, you know, th I think the, the thing about Duke is they strike so quickly. Navy took that lead, I think it was 2016, and the next time you turned around, they were down 11 points. That's what Duke does to you. They play you even. They hit you with an 8-0 or a 10-2 spurt pretty soon now. You're playing catch-up ball, and Navy's just not that kind of team. You might put another thing on your list of what it takes to win. It seems like the good teams have those abilities to spurt. Oh, you know, that's, and, you know, when, when the pressure's on you can they can they get it down low and score and i think it uh duke does a great job of that they're not just an outside or an inside team they have great balance they can beat you in both ways henderson now with eight points in the ball game inside four minutes to go they're giving whitaker that shot and he gets this one 
Tyler Whitaker, senior out of Lebanon, Oregon, has 10 points, but they're coming too late in this one. What this is doing for Duke now, they're getting a chance to work on their delay game, which could become very important before it's over in Dallas. They're also not having to expend very much energy right now. I'm sure that Coach K was concerned a little bit about fatigue when his team went into the tournament. They really had to play hard to win that ACC championship. They had a lot of close ball games. Ivory said they were too relaxed against Mississippi Valley State. Then Old Dominion, they got back to their game. They had DePaul put away. DePaul came back within six late in the game, though. Dawkins. Now Johnny Dawkins, the number retired, along with Dick Grode and Mike Jaminski. Three guys. Numbers will be worn again at Duke as Robinson is fouled by Ferry. The thing I like about Johnny Dawkins is he's improved every year. The statistics would point that out. Gary, they do a great job of milking the clock here at Duke. Fenton chasing him around. They're in like a little bit of a box and one defense. He runs off a double screen and hits nothing but the bottom of the net. What a great play there. They milk the clock. Got Dawkins still being in a box and one and got him the jumper when they wanted it. Craig Prather has checked in for Navy for the first time. Number 14, a freshman out of the Bronx. As Robinson gets a roll. See, Navy all year long has just camped on the free throw line. In the Syracuse game, Robinson shot 27 free throws, hit 21. And in this game, they've only tried 14, hitting eight of them. So everything that got him here has deserted him today. Well, Duke did not commit inside fouls. They were smart. They kept their people down on their feet and just forced Navy to put the ball in the hands of people they did not want taking the shots and just couldn't get to the free throw line because of it. Also in the game is Brian Gregory, another freshman out of Mount Prospect, Illinois. He's number 22. So Prather and Gregory making their first appearance in the tournament. Navy now chasing man-to-man, -man, trying to maybe create a turnover. But again, Johnny Dawkins off the screen, and bingo. That's Johnny Dawkins. 64-47. little bingo all day for him. He hasn't missed much of anything in the second half. That'll go out of bounds. You know, Doug, an interesting thing. A lot of people said Duke was soft at center, and that would haunt him. But you look at the champions, other than 84 with Ewing at center, your teams have not maybe had that overpowering center, and they've won it all. I tell you, in college, you give me a set of great guards and give me a player like Mark Allery, I'll take you on any place. I think the center is overrated in college basketball. It's nice to have that big guy, but with all the different kind of defenses and traps and all you see, you got to have a good pair of guards. It's going to be a charge on Amaker. Dawkins in the second half has 18 points, 26 for the game as the last 215 now ready to expire. Johnny Dawkins will perpetuate his career, will continue on. They have a chance to set an all-time record for wins in a season when they meet the winner of Kansas and North Carolina State. The game to follow this one. They sign Turner and he's fouled by King. That'll be four on Billy King. As coming in for the first time now for Duke is Weldon Williams. Also in the ball game is Kevin Strickland. And Allery leaves and he gets a standing ovation. Still looking for the smiles from the Duke player. It's time for them to let that big smile out right now. They're going to the Final Four. They're going to where they're supposed to be. And tell you what, Gary, I never had that feeling. Believe me, I'd be all smiles. 18 points and 8 rebounds for Allery. And that's kind of the uh, characteristic or the personality of this team. They don't seem to show a lot of emotion. They just go out and play by example. You know, and I hope this Navy team doesn't let this loss detract from their season. They've had a, a storybook year, gotten to deeper than they should have ever probably gotten. And David Robinson and Vernon Butler and Kyler Whitaker have been magnificent all season long. And I just hope that they don't hang their heads because finishing the final eight on the year is not a bad uh, a bad job. Tony Wells has checked into the game, a senior, six foot seven. He's number twenty. So Paul Evans getting every one of the ball game now with 154 left in it. Here's Williams. Williams, an outstanding student, by the way. Are you ready for this? He's in biomedical engineering, something you probably took. Well, he's from Illinois. You know this. <laughs> Here he is tracking it down. <laughs> I don't even what that is. Biomedical engineering. Well, what is it? I don't know. <laughs> 127, Dawkins doing a little creating as he ducks inside. You know, he's still playing hard. And now coming into the ball game for the first time, 
is going to be John Smith, a 6'7 freshman out of Fort Washington, Maryland. And number 12 is Bobby Jones for Navy. There's Amaker leaving. For Duke, 33 John Smith replaces Tommy Amaker. Well, they'll make their fifth Final Four appearance. The last time was 78 in St. Louis, and they've lost in the championship game against Kentucky. There's a Kyle D.C. and Rick Roby group. Bill Foster was the coach that year for Duke. And now Robinson will leave. Oh, he should get a great hand. What a great player. I, the, America finally got to see a class young man, a great player, this David Robinson. And needless to say, I fell in love with him as a player. He is spectacular. 23 points, 10 rebounds for Robinson. Now, and now Dawkins is leaving. Listen to this. He leaves with 28 points and 7 rebounds. That'll be off of Navy with a minute 19 to go. You know, Quinn Snyder's not played this ball game. Normally, he's their first guard in off the bench. Gary, he was really sick yesterday with a migraine headache, and he doesn't look well over on the bench. I'm sure that's why he's not been in the ball game. Yeah, he was lying down yesterday during practice, had a towel on his head, and he's had a lot of that. And boy, that is, that is tough. It's tough to play anything and when you've got a migraine headache on top of it. Billy King with a tip. 68-48, as we have less than a minute to go in this game. Three of the teams now have been decided. One more to follow. LSU will play playing Louisville. Duke will play the winner of North Carolina State of Kansas. There's Mark Nestle who was in in the first half, and now we have a foul. Foul is going to go on Tony Wells with 41 seconds left. Mark Nestle is a big hombre. He's seven foot two, weighs 260. <laughs> You can say Billis and Allery and Amaker enjoying this one. Bobby Bender, the assistant coach, is going back to the Final Four again. He's been there twice as a player, winning it with Indiana and then losing it with Duke. Look at this, 81 and 20. Their first year, they were 11 and 17 as freshmen. And then the pieces came together, and they've had three outstanding years, but this is the best one. It's a driving move by Brian Gregory, and out it comes to Strickland. Strickland will be playing a lot of basketball That's next year as celebration time, ferry up and cheering. It's not often you get to the championship game of a regional and have an easy time of it like this. Yet another substitution for Navy. Rich Brennan, 34, checks in. Also in the game, Kerry Manhurts. We can all say they've been in the NCAA tournament anyway. And that's going to be a foul. The foul will go on Bobby Jones. Well, Doug, I don't think we're surprised at the outcome. I think we we're a little surprised on the big margin. Well, I just think that Duke did everything they had to do to win the ball game, and we talked about it. To start the ball game, the offensive rebounding, they shut down Whitaker and Butler. They realized Robinson was going to get his and just pounded the offensive boards. And I think those factors, you know, were just way too much for Navy to handle. The thing that keeps popping out of my mind is, Krzyzewski said, the key is not to key on David Robinson. Boy, he had it exactly right. Well, you know what happens? You key on David Robinson, and he, and he gets your whole front line in foul trouble. He gets to the free throw line. He lives on the foul line. And you do a great job of maybe shutting him down, and then Whit Whitaker and Butler get theirs, and you win the battle and lose the war. And there'll be another foul. This will go on Williams. Rebounds in this game. Are you ready for this? Duke with 49, Navy with 29, and Duke had 21 offensive boards. That is total domination in the true sense of the word. They've been a good rebounding team this year, but that's obviously above that pace. Four seconds left is at the line is Bobby Jones out of Temple Hills, Maryland. If he hits this free throw, he can tell his grandkids, I played in an NCAA game and scored. An NCAA East Regional Championship game. And when he gets to be about 65, that free throw would have been the one that won the game against Syracuse in double overtime. <laughs> <laughs> the stories change as you get a little older. 
gets them both. 71-50 as it winds down. Duke is on their way to Dallas. The Blue Devils now with a record of 36-2. They've won 20 straight. Navy season ends at 31-5, and, and their 16-game winning streak is snapped. What a year it's been for this man, and Duke, can it continue? I'm sure they'll anxiously await our next game coming up, Kansas and North Carolina State, to see who they will be playing in the national semifinal game.